subtle skills, big results. Welcome to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to another Ninja Coaching Spotlight. We are so excited to have two more people with us today. I'm going to do a quick introduction of them, and then we're going to actually have them go a little bit deeper here because they've got a, a whole lot more of their story to tell. First off, uh, Renee Burt. Renee Burt is from Olympia, Washington. And uh, Renee, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for spending your time with us today. Thank you. It's good to be here. I love it. We also have her coach, Mary Claire, who's a ninja coach with us. Mary Claire, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I am awesome. It is a beautiful day here in Phoenix. Oh, my goodness. All right. I, what, what? Not too hot. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> yet. Right. <laughs> and we have Matt with us. Matt, good morning. How are you, sir? Hi. I'm great. How are you, man? I love it. I'm having a good morning. Well, Renee, let's jump right into this with you. So good morning. You're from Olympia, Washington. You're with Sotheby's Realty. Give us a little background on like your marketplace, where you do business currently right now. Well, I'm in Olympia at Olympic Sotheby's International Realty. I just moved over actually about a month ago. And I will honestly say, we'll get to it later, but it's because of my coach <laughs> and the things I'm learning and how I do business. But yeah, my marketplace, I'm in Thurston County, about one hour south of Seattle and about 40 minutes south of Tacoma, if you know the area. It's beautiful. We're off this, the water, off the sound. And I just love it here. It's beautiful. It is one of those spectacular areas of the United States. I don't know if anybody's ever spent any time up in Tacoma, Olympia. Like it is gorgeous up there. How long have you lived up there for? So we uh, raised our kids here. We've been here for over 27 years. That'll build you a little bit of a database over time, 27 years in one area. Good yeah. for you. Good for you. Yeah, thanks. One of the reasons, and again, we're doing these Ninja Spotlights is to help people see the journey that some of you have with, with Ninja. I think sometimes it's easy to see people that we, we call Ninjas and we're like, oh yeah, they run a Ninja business. And a lot of them don't get to hear the journey of how they got from before Ninja to where they're at right now. And it's not always a straight line. It's not always like I just inputted everything and boom, we have these results on this side. Uh, there's a journey that's involved in that. For, well, for every one of us, there's a journey of where we got, how we got to where we're at today. And uh, that's my goal today is to help people kind of understand the journey that a lot of ninjas go on to getting to where they're at. So let's start off real quick with when you first got introduced to Ninja. Can you tell me a little bit about like how that first took off for you, how you got introduced to it? Well, I was doing real estate part time, which I realize now is just not a very good idea because it's just too hard to do. Uh, I was trying to juggle a full time job in a different career and dabbling into real estate because this was a long time dream since I was 28 years old. And I was with the brokerage and two of my colleagues went to a ninja installation with Larry Kendall in Vegas the spring of 2020, I think it was. They came back and they're like, Renee, you have to go. This is totally you. And so I just believed him because sometimes, you know, I know myself really well, but those that know me sometimes know me even better than myself. And so I just trusted him. I go, okay, I'm going to get the book. So I bought the book and we were in this little book study together. Didn't go so well because none of us were very consistent at it, but they were a hundred percent like jumped in and I was sort of reading the book, but then I just wasn't. And that's how I started. So fast forward a year later, I decided I was going to do real estate full time. And when I made that, because it was just too hard to juggle both. So I, I, I finished my wonderful career in education and school counseling. And then I moved into real estate full time. So in June, and for those of people that know education in June, that's when our school and, you know, our school year ends. And that same week when I ended, I wrote a little thing into, <laughs> I just went to Ninja Selling website and I just wrote a little blurb in there. And I, it was really, really important to me that I had a coach that I believe in coaching because, you know, coaches know so much more than me and they guide me. And as an educator, you, you just always surround yourself with people that know more than you, right? So I put this little blurb in and I, and I wrote specifically, I need someone that understands education, understands psychology, so I can move from this 
career into this new career and bridge it. And I needed somebody that understood it. And I don't know, Mary Claire, was it like a week later? I get this call. I remember exactly where I was. I was in the car and I went, I remember too. I, once again, <laughs> yeah. I get a little emotional when things really click in. And I, I was, I went off into a parking lot and I, I just knew our conversation was, was exactly perfect. And I knew I, I was going to coach with Mary Claire. We just had an instant connection. And that's how it started. Well, Renee, real quick, and Mary Claire, that I want you to jump in here. But uh, Renee, what I want to say thank you to you for is the amount of information you provided us with when you reached out to us. Um, we have some people that reach out and they're just like, oh, I, I just I want to coach. <laughs> and and it's just, you know, very, very simple. Well, we have 30 coaches that are very different personalities from very different walks of life, very different backgrounds. And when you provide us with that type of information, we can sit back, you know, usually when we get a lot of information, we'll sit back as a team and we kind of look at it and we go like, okay, who's the right coach for this person? And uh, sometimes it's glaring and sometimes we're like, well, maybe this one, maybe that one. And uh, yours, I, I was one of those ones that was kind of like, Mary Claire, like that's, that's the route we got to go. So Mary Claire, <laughs> jump on in here. <laughs> oh man, all of the things and all of the feels. I remember that conversation distinctly too. Um, I remember exactly where I was sitting and, and, and the call. And, and one of the things that just energizes me as a coach and really just sort of ignites the relationship is that first touch point when we get on the phone to schedule a test drive. And there was this immediate connectivity that Renee and I had, and it just led to a beautiful conversation that really then from there, because Renee was wrapping up her school year, um, she had a beautiful trip planned with her husband following her retirement with her career. And it just led into this probably, what, a couple of months long conversation and dialogue a little bit back and forth as we progress towards the beginning of our coaching relationship. And so it just set the stage so well and um, really gave us a solid foundation to begin to work with. That's true. That's incredible. So Renee, tell me, so the story of finding Mary Claire is awesome. Tell us a little bit about why it was Ninja Selling that was the path that you wanted to follow. And also, once you chose that, coming into coaching, was there certain things that you were precisely looking for out of coaching? Was there anything that you were nervous about getting into coaching? To be honest, I did hardly even read the book. I just read the first few chapters. And what captivated me was it was about the relationship. And that's that's who I am. And I, I'm not a salesy person. And I didn't want to get into real estate as a used car salesman, you know, and I wanted to just be authentic. And that relationship piece just came through in the first few chapters that I read. And honestly, I just trusted my friends. <laughs> I hadn't even been to an installation before. I just intuitively knew that I needed to have somebody else outside of my world that was helping me guide this process. Because I felt like I was just on a ledge and just leaping off in this oblivion, like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? And I just needed somebody by my side. I don't even know why, but I just knew that I needed someone next to me guiding me. Well, I was going to say your background as a school counselor yeah. uh, probably led you to knowing that having somebody as a role as that can be there with you to help you through a process, whatever that might be. What, what grade school were you working in? I did middle school for 17 years and I have a 30 year career in education. I taught before that K through nine different places and different things that I did. But yeah, I ended my career at 17 years as it was middle school. So, you know, the word that comes to mind when I think of Mary Claire and throughout these two years that we've been together, Mary Claire has been my lifeline, like literally my lifeline. And I'm, it's really great that you've connected that to me just now because I was a lifeline for so many students and families for so long. I didn't even realize that I did that now that you mentioned it. And Mary Claire became that for me. It's, it's kind of cool. Matt, I don't know if you've noticed this, but I find it comes up a lot where people will use the term lifeline is kind of a new one. Safety net or sure. having a, a, an expert they have in their corner, like somebody that's a real common theme that comes from uh, a lot of people that have cho chosen to have a coach in their world. Yeah, I've you know, real estate is, is 
It is an incredibly collaborative business if you want it to be, but a lot of people find themselves in this kind of silo by themselves a lot of times. And I think that's the beauty of ninja selling is people brought in like, oh, it can be relationship-based. Oh, it can be collaborative. Oh, there are people who can also help guide me as well if I need that support. And I think the interesting thing is not that a coach knows anything more or less than, than a client potentially, right? It's just the having that opportunity to have somebody that you can work with who can look at things from an outside perspective, which, you know, Renee, you being that for so many children for so many years, right, is incredible. And then being able to like, oh, I can apply this into my business now. And and so now looking at you've been coaching with Mary Claire for two years, right? A little over two years. Two years. Is there something that you have developed, whether it's with your relationship with Mary Claire or something in your business that was a surprise to you that you didn't think was going to be coming about when you decided to sign up with coaching? Okay, Mary Claire, help me with this one. <laughs> <laughs> what have I learned? You can tell. I don't know. Oh my goodness. What a journey. I'm gonna let you take a stab at this one first, Renee, and I'll fill in the gaps. Okay, so the surprise of being on this journey with a coach and then just selling. I think what I didn't realize I was needing was just a foundational piece that I could come back to. When I started and I, and you know, I had a lot of deals going on, but I just didn't even know where I was. What I, I finished them, I was good at it, but I was, I was completely scattered and it was on accident. And I was afraid underneath, can I sustain this? Am I going to get another listing? Am am I going to have another buyer? Is this going to be over at the end of this transaction? You know, and so I think for me, uh, the surprise was that not only did it give me a foundation, but it is something that now I come back to. Like I fell off the wagon. Like last month, I wasn't I wasn't on vacation in New York for for a week, and I had other things going on, and I completely like stopped my ninja nine and my ninja five, even though I wanted to, but it's a place I can come back to. So I think one of the surprises for me is that I can settle in. I have a place to come back to when I get off track and it has propelled my business. Like on the other side of things, I mean, the relationships continue to to happen and my business is like doubled in a year. And it continues to double. And then it's surprisingly, I have now moved to this amazing brokerage that I would not have even thought of or considered if it wasn't for Mary Claire, her influence in guiding me through the valleys of, you know, not sure where I'm supposed to be kind of thing. But that's the first thing that comes to my mind. I have to hop in here if that's okay. Because when, so you have to consider contextually where we were, you know, in the state of, everything. When Renee and I first engaged, we were, it was 2021, I believe is when we, that that summer. So we were still in a place where installations were starting to finally ramp back up, you know, in the middle of, of COVID and, you know, to Renee's admission, you know, she'd read a few chapters in the book. But what I think is really important for everybody to understand when we started working together, she had a little bit of the ninja language, like enough that it was like, I resonate with this. This feels very authentic to who I am and how I want to run my business. Well, her first installation was December of that same year. So it really, and and keep in mind that I just said that was her first installation (laughs) in December of that year. So, you know, I think there was a surprise along the way of how anchoring that experience was for her when you think you have a, a good grasp of having read the book have a little bit of the lingo, understand what flow and auto flow and Ford questions and all of the things. But there was this anchoring point for Renee when she had that first installation. There was another transition that I saw evolve for Renee. Um, she went back to Vegas and she did Fort Collins first and then Vegas January. in January of uh, this year. And it was this evolution of her like really this, like a lifeline and Ninja has been that for her throughout the time that we've been working together. It's been an anchoring point that even if she falls off the wagon because she goes on vacation and she does all the things that we're here to give people the opportunity to have the life that they want to have, it's still that place that she comes back to, settles back into and has done great things in her business. Mary Claire, I'm happy you brought up the going back to an installation because 
you know, we watch a lot of people at the time and goes, yeah, I did that. Right. Uh, as Larry Kendall's, my favorite thing that he says is like a shower. Yeah, I took a shower once too. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things that I've never seen it be a negative when someone says, I'm thinking about going back to another installation. It's like a regrounding. It's a refocus. Uh, you know, we do everything we can as coaches to help people stay along the path. And, and I feel like we all, we, all of us do a great job of doing it, but there's some energy that happens when somebody goes to an installation, gets four days of that all under their belt. And all of a sudden they come sit back down with you and you have a different person you're coaching. Absolutely. Like all of a sudden the little like, but this, but that, ma, you know what? I got this going on. That's like all these little excuses just all of a sudden are gone. And they're like, let's go. Yep. And it is so much fun to coach somebody who routinely goes back to installations and keeps it on that level. So Renee, good for you. That's awesome. Thanks. And, and Mary Claire was there too. I was. <laughs> yeah. Always fun to get to meet your coach in person. That is true. So, yeah, absolutely. I wanted to highlight too there. I think, you know, the, the interesting thing about you going through the surprises, Renee and Mary Claire, you pulling some out here too, is that a lot of people might think, hey, I just need to hire a coach to get my performance up. Like I just need a performance coach, right? Which is a lot about what coaching is. It's like, how can we get you performing better so that you see better results? Higher income per hour. It's not always just bottom line, but it's, you know, usually there's a number, you know, that we're trying to increase, but also a lifestyle. But you you both explained something that was a little bit deeper as well in terms of like how you feel about the business and how you approach things. So Mary, Mary Claire, question for you. Have you, what is something you've seen significantly change in the way Renee runs her business as a result of her being able to better apply Ninja Systems into what she does every day? Well, first of all, Matt, I think the thing that I would love everybody to know about Renee, and, and I think it's it's important to this conversation. Renee is probably one of the most coachable people that I have ever had the gift of working with. That helps. Thank you. <laughs> she just, she absorbs and, th and then she goes and applies. So it's just really magical to watch her engage in that process. And Matt, I have to be very honest I, because I, that was so important for me to get out. And it was a precursor to what I wanted to say next. Will you reframe that question for me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what are, what have you seen uh, or how have you seen Renee change with her business? And you know that. Yep. You know, Renee, you you mentioned that your business has doubled year over year, and and I'll let you shine with that. But as your coach, one of the things that I have seen um, massive transformation has been around your mindset and your confidence. I think that confidence and that really very present mindset of positivity and abundance and you know just deep relationships have come from you really leaning into the systems and processes. I feel like that put, you know, some really solid, comfortable guardrails for you that you knew where you operated and what what you could, well, really, it's just, it's the framework, right? And so, and I think for somebody who is a peace person, who likes systems and processes and has come from an environment where systems and processes in the education realm are very much in place, that confidence and leaning into the systems, her growth through that over the last couple of years has been absolutely extraordinary. It's amazing. Well, thank you. And that's exactly what, what has made me grow. Even now, like we'll have a, co like the buyer process, the seller listing process, like we talked about that just earlier this week. Yep. And then fine tuning the processes. And so that does give me comfort. And I think, when you asked that question, Matt, to Mary Claire, the first word that came to my mind was confidence. Yep. I mean, my confidence has has definitely increased for good. When you talk about the confidence, I think uh, you'd mentioned something a little bit ago, which was, you know, every time doing a deal, there's that feeling for a lot of people out there that that deal might be their last deal. Mm. It's like, you know, it's a, every deal could be the last deal they ever do in real estate. And, you know, I think, you know, what Mary Claire and you have developed here by, by getting the foundation and understanding how this business works, understanding how relationships work, it sounds like you've got a fair amount of confidence built around this now so that you can sit back and say, look, I have a process. I know exactly what makes this business work. 
And every deal is not my last deal. Every deal is the deal that leads me to the next deal that's going to be in the pipeline here and going to be helping me down the path and helping other people down the path. And that's what I was hearing from you when you were saying that earlier. Is that kind of what, what I was interpreting that right? Oh, for sure. And Mary Claire reminds me, like, don't be attached to the outcome. Yeah. And before I started working with her and in the frenzy of how, I don't even know how I did it, but I was always kind of in the back of my mind, you know, kind of attached to the outcome and thinking it's, it's about me and then the outcome and it, it is about me, but it's not. So that's another phrase that I keep coming back to, thanks to Mary Claire and the coaching and keeping the systems moving forward. And it's, is, is that not to be attached to the outcome, which then is, it's okay. There is going to be another deal out there because I'm doing the systems and I'm not worried about that anymore. I'm just concerned about really caring for the people that are in my sphere and in my world and my clients. And, and it's just a, it's a shift of mindset that that's helped me greatly for sure. Some of the deals, the best thing you can do is let them go. Yeah. Yeah. That is the best thing is say, Hey, this isn't working right now. It's okay. We'll circle back around on it. And uh, when you get attached to the outcome, it's like, I've got to make this one come together. Very different place to come from with your business. So I'm happy that you're there. You made a comment to me, Renee, you, and I've heard people talk about coaching and they, a lot of people look at coaching like, I have an accountability partner. And I always tell people that, you know, if you're looking for an accountability partner and you sign up looking for getting a coach, you probably have one of the most expensive accountability partners you could ever have. <laughs> like that, that's, there's a lot going on there. That's very different than just having an accountability partner. You use the word, I have the ultimate accountability partner, which made me stop for a second and say, I want to know more about that. So if you had to describe what the ultimate accountability partner looks like, what does that look like to you? I guess if I were to describe it, I don't know. Okay. How would I describe it? So. Well, okay, this is what Mary Claire does for me. She's my cheerleader when I need it. She picks me up off the ground when I do remember a, a situation where, I don't know if you remember this, Mary Claire, but I early, early on, I had gone to a different program with people in my brokerage. Oh, I remember that. Well, wow. you remember this? And I called, literally called my, well, I called Mary Claire, but I called my counseling partner the last night and in my hotel room, and I'm like, Aaron, I can't do this. If this is what real estate's about, I'm out. Can I have my job back? And then I came back, and then the next weekend, I had a buyer consultation, and I was just deflated. And so Mary Claire called me on a Saturday morning, like before I went, because I'm like, hey, I just, I don't know what I, I had, I don't know what I said in a text, but she literally called me on her own. It was not a coaching call. And she walked me through this mindset about how to get back up off the ground and say, hey, you just need to get to the Ninja installation and then we'll talk. And so she helped me through this. I ended up getting the buyer, you know, and we ended up closing eventually, but she helped me with my mindset. And if it wasn't for her, I was just lost. She goes above and beyond. She just did go above and beyond, helps me with my mindset, cheerleader, and then sees my blind spots. Like there are things that I kind of churn in <laughs> without even realizing it. And as a perfectionist, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm a perfectionist, recovering, hopefully recovering perfectionist. And sometimes I just get caught in my head. And then I think I have to do this a certain way or a certain perfect way. And she'll just kind of like, I don't know how she does it, but like Mary Claire, you like ask a certain question or you kind of guide me in a certain way. And then I kind of get off the ledge or... Oh yeah, is this really that important? It's probably not as important as I'm making it be. And so it's I think those are the things that Mary Claire's more than an accountability partner. Like with an accountability partner, because I've I have those and I've had them. Oh yeah, did you do your ninja nine uh, five this morning? No. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, we don't really right. Yeah. But I don't know if that answers your question. But that's how I feel. I know it. It totally. And I hope well, you can all appreciate my son. We, the uh, the day keeps changing. The sun keeps adjusting. And, and every once in a while, I get blessed with this kind of it catches me off guard. I so I hope that. you all can appreciate the beautiful light coming in. No, I really appreciate you sharing exactly what you just said, because 
I find a lot of people think having a coach is, did you do your stuff? No. Okay. We'll do better next week. And we'll circle back around. And the blind spots, I, I find a lot of people figure that out once they have a coach. They're like, oh, they have opened up all these paths that I wasn't necessarily paying attention to, or maybe I was missing. And then mindset, oh my gosh, it is probably, Larry and I have talked over the years and we're like, what's the difference of ultimate success for some people or some people that are just stuck in the weeds and can't seem to get to the next step? And it usually comes down to mindset and mindset yep. will also take you out of the game altogether. And I think that you sharing that, I just really appreciate it. And this is just going to get brighter and brighter and brighter. So I hope you can understand. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for saying that. Of course. Yeah. I mean, it's all true. I, I just wish I had words to express this whole journey with Mary Claire and Ninja. Well, for all of you that are just checking in right now, and you notice that Renee's moved to a different area, we had some technical difficulties. And uh, so we've had to kind of revamp a little stuff, but we're going to jump right back into where we kind of left off. So Mary Claire, you had something you wanted to add into this and uh, yeah, have at it. All right. Very good. Well, I mean, we've, so we've been talking about mindset and confidence and, you know, cheerleading and seeing blind spots. One of the things that as I was reflecting about the, the work that Renee and I have done, one of the things that has been a big part of her journey that I think is really important. And, you know, if you think about the, the weekly meeting agenda on the very front page, we, we talk about our why and our core values. And that has been a really big part of Renee's story and her progression through the, the last couple of years of that transition into real estate, you know, coming from an environment where she had a team of colleagues around her, it was very supportive. They had each other to go to. Matt, you mentioned at the top of our time together how often it can be that when we get into this business, it can either be very collaborative or it can be very isolating and we wind up in our silos. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I think is important about Renee's journey is that we've had a lot of those conversations around Renee's core values. And one of those things has been connectivity. And so her journey over the last couple of years has included the movement through three different brokerages, really not necessarily by her own choosing and volition, but it's just been this sort of almost organic and very timely evolution through uh, different brokerages to really find her tribe because that connectivity, working with colleagues that are collaborative, that have like mindset, that think, you know, relationally was really critical and key to her success in her sustainability in this career. Because I think if she had not had that core value clearly identified so that she could find her right place, that would also be another one of those things that could potentially lead her out of the business. So I really wanted to highlight the core values piece because that's a spotlight for me with her. I 100% agree, Mary Claire. And to piggyback on that, because I'm in the Ninja Coaching, it has created more of a tribe. So now, like with this coaching, we have the masterminds, Garrett, that you lead, you and Matt lead. And from there, I have met other ninjas, like David Cathers, for example. I'm going to throw him out. Yep. <laughs> He's in Gig Harbor. And one of the masterminds, I noticed his name and that he was like, oh my gosh, there's another ninja in Washington. So we connected. And now we're in an we call it a ninja skills group. He's coaching with Mark Johnson. And one thing led to another. Now he and I and another, Nathan, who probably, and now Carol, Nathan's in Virginia, and now Carol is in Texas. So we've created our own little tribe and we meet once a week. It was Wednesdays at 10, now we've moved it, but it doesn't matter. But now see, once again, now I've created that relationship with other ninjas so awesome. that are in the business and it's through the coaching. So those kinds of things. Renee, I'm so happy you use the masterminds the way that I want people to use the masterminds. Anybody who's listening to this, every about two months, we get all the coaching clients together as much as they can that want to interact with it. And we put them on a call where they can all learn from each other. I'll throw questions in, we break them out, and they all you know kick it around about how they best approach whatever the question might be. And I always tell them, like, you're going to meet incredible people and take these relationships and go foster them on your own with ninjas around the United States. So, Renee, you've done exactly what I want people to do with the mastermind. So thank you. Yeah. That's awesome. And we all love it. 
And then now that I'm in my new brokerage, Olympic Sotheby's, we have an initiative book study. And I'm now working with people that are hungry for this ninja system. And so we meet on Mondays at 10. And it's kind of cool because I've been in coaching now for two years. I'm living and breathing the system. I'm learning, learning more every day and becoming more intricate into it. So now I get to share with this wonderful group of people that are just learning ninja. Many of them are going to be going to an installation in September with Larry at Fort Collins because I was able to share my experience with them and now they're excited. So it just expands. Like what you focus on expands, I guess, right? That's I've heard that before. Must be must be a <laughs> phrase that's, some, that's said in some program. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so what Mary Claire is saying is it's true, like tapping into that core value. And Mary Claire helped me figure out one of my core values is. And so I just couldn't have done it alone. That's amazing. Well, so Renee, what if if you had a, a piece of advice for someone who's either new to the business or, or new to the ninja path or thinking about the ninja path, what would be your piece of advice for an agent who's looking to engage into ninja selling? Well, honestly, get involved. I mean, check out the coaching. I'm not trying to sell it at all, but yes, we did not ask her to say that. It has helped me. <laughs> <laughs> just do it. Just reach out. It's not scary. And just be yourself. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to go towards perfection. It just, I owe my my whole career in this to Ninja and because it fits me and the accountability that it brings. I need other people to keep me moving. And, you know, I think other people need to be keep moving too. So we just help yeah. each other. I just, just reach out. That's all you have to do. It's not scary. Well, I appreciate you sharing that so much. And, uh, I know uh, from the moment I got a chance to meet you, uh, one, your excitement around Ninja, two, your excitement around Mary Claire was infectious. I was like, oh my <laughs> gosh, Mary Claire, what have you done to Renee? <laughs> I know. <laughs> so it's been an absolute pleasure getting to spend some time with you. Mary Claire, thank you for what you do and my the pleasure. energy that you bring and the expertise that you bring around Ninja. I am continually getting reminded from others about just people like yourself, the coaches that we have that are uh, you know helping so many people out there. And I want to say thank you to you for who you are and who you are in our world. So really appreciate it. Thank you. It's a gift. It really is. Well, thank you. And to any of you out there who are listening to this, again, the, the goal of today, I wanted you to see a journey in somebody's path through Ninja. Some people go to an installation and they take that all in and they run with it and they go to huge successes in their business. There's some people that do the installation and then they feel the need and the want to have a, a person in their corner that can help them along that path. And that's where we come in. And then there's also great groups out there as even Renee on top of coaching has figured out that she's found other ninjas that she can kind of collaborate with and work with. And all these different levels are out here for people, depending on what you need to help you get to where you want to go. And uh, if you ever have any questions, you know where to find us. Renee, Mary Claire, thank you. Matt, thank you as always for joining me on the journey here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank thank you. And thank you, Mary Claire and Renee so much for joining us. We appreciate hearing your stories. We really appreciate you so much. Thanks for having us. It was delightful to spend this time together. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for thinking of us and it, this has been a pleasure. It's been an honor to meet you guys and to participate today. So thank you so much. Absolutely. You're so new into Ninja. I have a feeling we're going to have more conversations down the road as you continue to implement more and more and more. This is not the end of Renee Bird, everybody. We're going to have more <laughs> conversations in the future. Oh, thanks. Absolutely. I love it. Well, thanks, everybody. We appreciate you joining us. Tune in next time for the next episode of the Ninja Selling Podcast. Have a great day. Thank you, everybody. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like more, visit us at the ninjasellingpodcast.com. There you will also find links for more information about ninja selling and coaching. Have an incredible day.